Okay, welcome to our short uh, video lesson on n-person games. Uh, n-person, it you know the n generally stands for anything more than three. Although I mean, in theory, you could do this with a uh, a smaller game, I guess. But uh, the idea is you have some number of people that's essentially too large to look at each person's individual. Uh, individual actions. The, the reason for these, you know, extending game theory to these types of games is you have a lot of games where there's far more than two or three players, right? Economic competition, and if you just drive up the strip in Seedlands Grove, there's dozens of businesses that are courting, um, they want the business of thousands of consumers. Like, there's no way we could possibly draw out a game where each pre the preference of everybody is, you, know, you look at each individual's preferences and draw a tree diagram or a payoff matrix. It's just, it can't be done. Highway congestion, thousands of people, environmental games, monetary exchange, all sorts of games of this sort. Uh, what we've learned so far can't deal with these very well. So if we had eight players in a game, um, there would be eight factorial potential relationships between the players, which works out to be 40,320. Uh, yeah, we can't do that, right? We just, we can't do that. So in order to study an n-person game, we need to simplify. The way that we do that is by using representative agents, and we also use what are called state variables. So within n-person games, it's re we use agents um, that are representative. So we have some definition for the player of the game that suits a number of players in the game, right? It's not just one individual's preferences. It's the preferences that match for either everybody or a large subset of everybody. So if um, you have a group of agents that face the same strategy or get the same payoffs, right? You could assume that every agent is the same. So every agent faces the exact same strategies and gets the same payoffs. When you do that, you have what's called a representative agent. And in in-person games, that's what we're going to be doing. So no longer will we be looking at how each player does. Each player is essentially going to have the same utility function. And so each player gets the same payoff. Or sometimes maybe you have two or three groups of players that each get the same payoff, but it's uh, it's all the same in the sense that you have a representative agent or representative agents. A state variable is how we define where we are in the game, right? So we we know from our sequential games, right? You can work your way back from any point to figure out all of the actions that were taken to get you to that particular point. Uh, if you have n players in a game, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. So we just define a state variable as what the current state of the game is. So it's going to be a number or a small list of numbers. Um, and the numbers will make sense when we get to them. So a number or a small list of numbers that summarize where we are in the game right now. So a state variable summarizes the state of the game. A player, and therefore you, solving the game, who has the value of the state variable along with uh, knowing the preferences for the representative agent or representative agents, can solve the game. So an n-person game can be solved by knowing what the preferences are for the representative agent or representative agents and the state variable, the current state of the game. Um, from there, you know, each agent could choose the best response strategy. So in road congestion, right, the state variable might be how many car, what percentage of cars are on a particular one road versus another road. Well, based on how congested one road is, you'll know whether to take route A or route B, 
right? If route A is conge more congested, you take route B. If route B is more congested, you take route A. The state variable is the level of congestion. Each agent is assumed to have the same utility function of wanting to minimize their time waiting, uh, you know, waiting in a traffic jam. N-person games, possibly more than any other game, I think it uh, seems very difficult to just summarize with words. We are going to be going through several problems on this, and we start with what's called the queuing game. So this is where six people are waiting to get checked into a flight. Consumer's utility is based on when they get checked in. So everybody wants to be checked in first. Uh, you know, another similar queuing game, Southwest Airlines used to just allow everybody to kind of go up to the front and wait in line whenever. Um, they used to have an, they'd have an a, a boarding group, a B boarding group, and a C boarding group splitting into thirds, but if you wanted, if you had a preferred seat, you might go in line really early for that. Well, but waiting in line is no fun. So you could wait in line, and if you're served first, you get a higher utility. So in the queuing game, players want to get checked, be served first. They get higher utility when served first, lower utility when served last. And we set up this game, I would think somewhat realistically. In this game, the airline will check people in randomly if no one's in line. So if nobody's in line, they're just going to call out names, say, come up, come be served. Um, and it's a one, in, you know, it's a random chance that you are list, you are checked in first. But players will incur a two unit loss of utility by waiting in line. So you can wait in line and waiting in line will make sure you are served next, but you do get a two unit loss of utility by waiting in line. Uh, what I want you to do is figure out, we've got six people here. What is the equilibrium number of people who should be waiting in line? You know, what, what's going to be the equilibrium in this end person game? How many people are going to wait in line and how many people are going to choose not to wait in line? Uh, take a shot at this one before coming to class. This one's not an easy one, but I'd like you to take 10 minutes trying to figure this one out. And then we're gonna work on this one together in class.